Okay, I'm tentatively hoping that I can say third time lucky. Everybody that's joining us from all around the world, I apologize again for the technical issues. We are hoping that we can stay with you this time and that everybody can hear us. I'm based in the US, Noel is in the UK, our producer's in the UK, so I can only apologize, but let's get on with this. Let's get you the information that you have joined to receive. We will do our best. Thanks for bearing with us. Thank you for having patience. A very important part of marathon running, as we know, is, is patience and being able to stay <laughs> calm. So we're with you for hopefully the next little while. Um, so let's kick off. We were about to talk to Noel, our Paralympian, who's extremely experienced in Japan, about getting to Tokyo, arriving at the airport, and what to expect. Noel, over to you. Uh -huh. Okay, thanks for hanging in there with us, guys. So actually, uh, for many of you, in fact, I've just come back from Japan. We spent Christmas and the New Year in Japan. The journey is a little longer than it used to be um, for, for obvious reasons. So, But um, if you've done your preparation and you've downloaded the Visit Japan web um, immigration uh, and customs, and uh, COVID vaccination status app. Things are in incredibly smooth. And um, to the extent that from landing to being outside waiting for our shuttle bus, it was 40 minutes when we arrived in Haneda in, at the end of December. So the, the great thing about Japan is, and Japan's planning and attention to detail is pretty much as soon as you come out from the arrivals gate, everything is exactly where you want it to be. So if you arrive in Narita, the directions for the Narita Express, for the limousine bus will be there. Um, the, the machines where you can buy, buy your, your tickets. Um, in, in, if you arrive in Haneda Airport, literally the monorail, you can see it from as you come out. Um, signage in Tokyo has um, improved massively in the last three years to the extent that pretty much everything everywhere is in English as well as Japanese. So those non-Japanese speakers, please don't worry about that. There, I have to say that there are also a million YouTube videos out there explaining exactly what you need to do if you arrive in Narita or if you arrive in Haneda and how to get to the center of Tokyo. So they will literally, they'll walk through videos, you know, from how to buy the ticket, you know, which buttons to press. They're incredibly in, de in depth. Um, so it is incredibly easy. Obviously, you know, it's a, it is a long journey to Japan and you're, you guys are running marathons. So it's a really good idea to be well prepared for that slightly longer flight, you know, making sure that you're hydrated, taking ex extra snacks, you know, 13 hour journey without food doesn't make for a happy runner. Um, but actually, once you arrive in Japan, everything is, is incredibly easy uh, and, and straightforward with the app. Great. And again, thank you to everyone for joining us. Thank you for your patience. We hope you can hear us loud and clear now. So for those who are unfamiliar, so Narita is a bit further away from the city centre. It is quite a journey. It's going to be over an hour from um, getting out of the airport to your hotel if you're in the city centre. Haneda is a little bit closer. There are lots of inf uh, pieces of information online um that you can find but absolutely be prepared know what your rough plan is as how how you're going to get from the airport to your hotel choose the option that works for you and everybody there is extremely helpful um and lots of them do speak english and are very willing and wanting to speak english so they will be there to help so i'm going to i'm going to switch over to a few questions that some of you kindly submitted ahead of time let's get going on some race specific things and we'll come back to Noel for some more cultural experience shortly so first of all in our facebook group thank you to debbie early and jennifer whitaker metvier who asked can you tell us about the health app now i know there's been lots of comments on the facebook group about this and also valion asked in regards to covid testing how many tests are required before the race so i've spoken to our tokyo marathon colleagues and i want to share these pieces of information with you and then more will come in the runner handbook on february the 17th so compared to what things were like last year for those of you that were ever able to travel into japan there is no pcr testing and no pre-reservation for the expo required anymore but there will still be rapid antigen testing that runners must take and you must download that health management app now, runners were emailed last night with a step-by-step -step guide on the health management app. I have looked at that as well. Please know, everyone, that the keyword that you need for that app is in the email. It's a complicated code. It's numbers and letters. The keyword is in that email. You must complete that health management app 
every day from February the 26th to monitor your temperature and health conditions. They're very strict on COVID policies there. They had it a lot longer than other countries were, were struggling through the process. And you must carry your phone on race day so that they can check that you have completed that app. That is non-negotiable. I know a lot of you don't enjoy running with your phone, but you know now you've got time to plan and practice. You must carry your phone and you must log your details every day from February 26th. The email that you have received has a step-by-step -step guide and there's also a note in there that if you're having any issues with the app, don't contact the entry desk at the Marathon team. They're not responsible for that app. Please do contact Global Safety. Okay, so that's us covered as far as we have details on COVID and health management app. If there are any new updates, we can talk about them on our second session, which is on Thursday, the 23rd of February. Uh, uh, Lisa's asking, is February 26th Japanese time? To make, make sure I would just do it on your schedule when it is February 26th in your time zone, I think that would be absolutely appropriate. Um, and at most, even if you're in the US, um, you're going to be 14 or 15 hours behind. So does the app work out outside of Japan? Yes, Jane, I believe that it does. If you're able to download it and connect ahead of time, then you should absolutely be able to do that. We know that most of you won't be coming in until the first few days in March. OK, presume you can put your phone in a drop bag once in area. David, not exactly sure on that question, but for clarity, you do need to show your app when you enter the start area. So they have told us that you need to run with your phone. OK, one question that you might be able to help with, Noel, from Gail Thomas on our Facebook group. Can you buy the train ticket for Narita Express at the airport? How easy is it to get your transport tickets once you arrive? Yeah, so there are a couple of options there. There are machines with the instructions in English. It's worth carrying some cash. So when I went out there for the launch of Park Run, we all arrived at Narita very weary at about seven o'clock in the morning and discovered that nobody had any cash for the, for the ticket machine, um, which was a, but there are ATMs in, in the area. Um, it's a, um, or you can buy the uh, Suica. So it's so a S-U-I-C-A card, um, which is like a prepaid card. So you buy the, you know, you put a certain amount of money on that card and you can use that um, for the for the ticket machines. That's also usable in, in other locations uh, like convenience stores um, and with uh, the drinks vending machines, the Jido Hanbaiki. So, yes, you can buy it at the, um, at the airport. Great. Um, I'm doing my best to look at questions that are submitted and also there's lots of good comments coming in on the group. So yes, Jane, any news on throw off clothing? So the Tokyo Marathon does have a policy that they are encouraging people not to throw clothing. I know that's very different to how uh, things are done at other races. That's just part of their culture. They don't have such a um, recycling process in, um, in evolution there. However, they are understanding that that will be the case for some international runners and there will be a team of people to collect clothing. But if you can avoid dropping clothing, they would ask that you do so. But you're certainly not going to get in trouble if you need to leave something behind. But, you know, come prepared. You know you're going to wait. Uh, there was a question earlier um, this week about is there somewhere covered to wait pre and post marathon? No, you will be outside in the start gantry. And then as you finish, you do have a bit of a walk um, at the finish line, which is normal for most marathons. So do be prepared for that. Um, wear the layers that you need. It's discouraged for you to throw clothing or leave it at the start, but they understand that sometimes that is unavoidable. Okay, so let's go through some more questions here. We have lots, and if we don't get to them today, we'll do our best to get to the next session. Derek Chu asked, are pacers available? And is it mile markers or kilometer markers only? So the Tokyo Marathon, they call them pace setters. And there will be pace setters for those aiming for three hours, 3.30, four hours, 4.30, five, and five hours, 30. Also, there will be kilometer, mar kilometer markers every single kilometer, and there'll be mile markers every five miles. So Derek, we hope that answers your question. We've had a lot of questions on hydration. That is going to be something we'll cover in the next session as there will be more details in the runner's handbook in terms of what you can and cannot bring to the start. So we'll come back to that, all of the questions that people 
submitted on there. While we're talking about hydration, Noel, food and drink is a big part of the Japanese culture. Would you care to share any tips for the best places to dine while in Tokyo? I was going to say, other than running, it has to be the best reason to visit Japan. Um, it, Japan caters for pretty much every budget and every taste. In fact, it's probably far cheaper to eat in Tokyo at a great good restaurant than it is in London. So I'm mean, literally, it's, it's very difficult to go very far without finding a great place to eat. So um, I'm not completely up to speed with with vegan options um, in Tokyo, I'm not being vegan myself, vegetarian options are definitely improving. But whatever your dietary requirements, I'm sure they'll be met in Tokyo. It, again, you know, Japan has uh, these uh, convenience so convenience stores that are really useful if you're jet lagged okay so i like me and you're wake, prone to waking up at 3 a.m um in the morning and you need you know food and drink you can nip out to these 24-hour convenience stores called convenience and there are three major um chains so there's a lawson there's 7-eleven and then there's family mart and they all sell you know um bread and and drinks and even sports drinks and and vitamin supplements as well as you know light meals bento you know so rice boxes and literally everything everything is available so from carbohydrate options you know from from pasta to various noodles ramen udon is anybody getting hungry here. Um, Great. So, um, um, Noel, we have a, a question specifically from Carla McDonald asking, how easy is it to convey a seafood allergy? Do you have any tips on how she can convey that? Should she take something on a piece of paper to show? Is there something that would, would help her in restaurants? Um, I, I mean, not, not everyone's eating sushi three meals a day in Japan. So it's very easy to not become close to seafood in Japan, if should you so wish. So there are lots of lots of options there. Um, Anybody, I mean, Lauren, if anybody's got any particular requirements about sort of language or, or phrases they'd like used, I can make something up for you. So allergy in Japanese is arerugi and, and fish is... Say that again, arerugi? Arerugi, So it's arerugi. like... Arerugi. Arerugi. So you, okay. if you said allergy, it would, you know, and fish is sakana. So it's it's probably better to just maybe just get something prepared, um, you know, Google Translate, whatever, come up with a phrase, stick it on a little bit of card, show that to the place most of the plate um restaurants um that were visited recently in japan um have <clears throat> qr codes where they can translate menus get english menus now it's definitely not as um difficult to get by without japanese as it as Great. it used to and lots of our uh, members are sharing some useful things, saying that there's some great Happy Cow app is useful translation yep. about allergies. Thank you, Shyam. Jane yep. saying speak and translate app. So absolutely. So Carla, we hope you don't have any issues there. Uh, Guatam is asking, uh, Guatam Narang is saying, can we bring goo honey stinger gels? Absolutely, you can bring gels to the race. Um, just trying to flick through some of these. Hydration, we will come back to. Uh, can you buy porridge pots from the convenience store? Sally Ann Polky, you're a girl after my own heart. Yes, they do have um, sashes, but I would advise putting some in your suitcase just yeah. in case. If that's something that you like to have on race mornings, as I do, then definitely bring um, your porridge um, for sure. So let's have a look at some other questions here. COVID clarifications, we're going to come back to that in the next session. For those that seem to be in tour groups, um, it appears that you have not received the email from the tour group yet, yet about the health management app, but do stay tuned. I'm sure they will get that to you soon. And like I say, it is a step-by-step -step process. Um, now I'm going to switch back over to see what we were talking about, some of the questions that were coming in the other day. Uh, Simone Carniglia, Carnigli apologies for the bad pronunciation. Will there be professional photographers that provide photos along the course for runners to buy? I'm alone and would love to have some memories. Yes, Simone, there will be photographers similar to the other majors. They have an agency that will do that. So you will be captured along the course, so make sure you smile. And also at the finishing area, there will be photographers there. Um, Anique Vidal, she has asked, are families allowed to share the moment when medals are given out to runners? No, this is the same as other majors. You're in a finishing shoot, you are inside the race area where it is fenced. So when you actually receive your medals, your family and friends are not able to enter that, that area. It's still a secure race area. Um, but when you meet them outside of there, then absolutely there's some great opportunities to take pictures. 
and some people have asked the best place to meet your family after the race so you will have different finishing shoots that we'll talk about next time but your main points will either be the Tokyo station or Hibiya, Hibiya station, Yarakucho station or Otomachi station and they're all around the finishing area. Um, Travelling above ground on ground level can be challenging after the marathon because of road cl closures. But the wonderful thing about Tokyo, as Noel will know well, mm. there are lots of underground paths that will take you to subways and stations. So just talk about that, navigating some of uh, your way around the, the city centre. There's a, a great network there. Yeah, I mean, from JR. And remember, if you're going to travel around Japan after the race, you can use your Japan Rail Pass on all the JR trains in Tokyo. So if you activate that at the airport on arrival, you can use that to get around in Tokyo, including on the race day. But don't lose that pass. Um, the the subway obviously is incredibly reliable. Um, again, all the signage now um, and a lot of the announcements within the trains now in, in English. So please don't worry about that. But Taxis again, super friendly, super in the lead up to the Olympics and Paralympics, there was a big push to have um, taxi drivers learn English. So most people will be able to 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 get by in, in English. So it, it really is. It's one of the, the, the easiest cities in the world to navigate. And I say that as a visually impaired person. So it's, it's you know, at the underground stations, all of the exits and the main points um, of interest for each of those exits, again, written in English pretty much everywhere so it, it's it's incredibly easy and very and very straightforward it can get i mean traveling during russia and japan can be a little bit um sort of from tr a treat for the senses might be one way of putting it it's, it can be incredibly incredibly busy and with something somewhere like shinjuku seeing three and a half million passengers through you know a day during rush hour is probably not a good time to so but i'm pretty confident i'm 100 percent confident having spent 30 years traveling to to and from japan that the organization will be spot on when it comes to getting you where you need to be in time to do what you need to do. Yeah, the public transport is is like no yeah. other. OK, we are having a flurry of questions. Thank you to those. Some some of them are already been answered before we've got to them. Uh, yeah, Pakari Sweat is the drink that is offered on right. course. Again, we'll yeah. cover hydration in terms of personal hydration later. Pakari is great. I, I ran with it for years in Asia. Um, but of you know, um, it's very similar to um, what is offered elsewhere. Um, where do you go to get your six star medal after the race, Margaret Hatcher? We are going to give you specifics on that next session. We're waiting till the handbook comes out, but it will be very simple to follow. You will not miss us. You will cross the finishing line. You will take the direction according to the letter on your race bib, and we will be there, myself and other members of the World Marathon Majors group plus a host of volunteers. We will be there to welcome you, to celebrate you, to give you your medal. So all you need to do is follow the directions, follow the flow of traffic, and we will be there at the other side. So no worries about that. We'll give you specifics on the next time. Um, we had a question on the Expo. Les Crab, how easy is it to get to the Expo and back? I am staying by the start. So the Expo is a little bit out of town. You will need to take public transport. It's at the Tokyo Big Site, which random piece of knowledge for the Summer Paralympics and Olympics last year. It was um, used as the main press centre and the Olympic Broadcasting House. So I spent many a day in there. It's a fantastic venue. It's several floors. We will have um, a couple of booths there. So you will find us in the expo. Um, you must go there to get your packet pickup. So it will be open on March 2nd and 3rd from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Visitors must enter 30 minutes before it closes. And on March 4th, it's open from 10 a.m. to 6 a.m. last entry at 5.30. So there are a couple of um, options how to get there. Again, if you Google bigsite.jp, Les, you'll be able to get some visitor access information. But the nearest station is Kokusai, Tenjijo, which is on the Rinkai line or Tokyo Big Site Station on the Yurikamomi line. So um, if you listen back to the recording, you can understand those. Um, it is far from the start and finish, so you will need to take a train, but it's all part of the experience. It's a great day out and uh, it's a fantastic venue. So um, definitely worth going and you do need to go to obviously get your bib. All right, let's get through some more questions. This is fantastic. We're so 
delighted to have people from literally all over the world joining us. Um, bum, bum, bum. Will there be any, Ken Wong, will there be any World Marathon Majors pre and post gathering parties and events? We specifically are not holding any events, but I do know that some runners are, are getting together and organizing their own events. Um, there is no shakeout run, an official one. There is a friendship run which takes place on the Saturday with Tokyo, but that has already closed and it's actually a virtual event. Um, if you have registered for that virtual event, you can then go to Asukusa to um, enjoy some of the cultural activities. Um, so they have an in-person finish line set up on March the 4th, but that is a virtual event this year that's transitioned since COVID. So it's a friendship run on the Saturday for pre-entry only. Otherwise, no, let's talk about some of the fantastic yeah. places that our runners can go for shakeouts. Give us your best, your best suggestions. I was hoping you were going to ask me this question because mm -hmm. Tokyo is one of the most amazing cities to run around. And I vividly remember getting off my, well, waking up early the first morning 30 years ago and running around the Imperial Palace at 5.30 in the morning. It's, 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 it's an incredibly, it's, it's, there's a serenity given that it's one of the, it's one of the biggest cities in the world, but it's a, it's a beautiful city to run around. So the loop I just mentioned, the five kilometer route around the Imperial Palace is really easy to access from everywhere. everywhere. I'm just a little conscious that I'm not encouraging a thousand people to get together and, uh, and offend the authorities <laughs> to run around in one group. But that's really, it's a really nice, um, well signposted um, loop, really easy to follow. I did it on my own and I'm visually impaired, so I, that, that's a great place. If you want to get into the parks, um, the, you know, there are Japan, uh, Tokyo specifically, as there are, the parks are a little smaller than you might find in other countries, you know, like New York or, or uh, in other cities rather like New York and London, but uh, Yoyogi Park um, is a beautiful park. That's really easy to access from Shibuya. That's a, there's a 1.5 or um, 3K loop around there. I personally love Komazawa Park. So Komazawa Park is where the 1964 uh, Olympics were held. And there's a two kilometer marked, uh, as the Japanese call it, jogging trail um, around there. That can, all, Both Yoyogi, um, Komaza and the Imperial Palace loops, they can get quite busy in the morning, but if, if you're out there pretty pretty early, you should be able to navigate yourself around. And Komaza has great cafes. Yoyogi is very close to, to good good restaurants, good places to have breakfast. I also ought to mention, I suppose, um, uh, Tamagawa, so the river Tama or the Sum Sumidogawa is a, a, another great river to run along, but Tama, uh, Tamagawa actually has its own park run, so Futako Tamagawa Park Run. Um, I think there are three park runs around Tokyo. I might be mistaken. Um, we have but... some runners asking about that. So Patrick Daly was asking what was the best park run to go to. So can you just say those three names very slowly? Uh, so I can only remember, I can, <laughs> off the top of my head, and this is embarrassing because I was there at the first um, park run in Japan. Um, remember Futako, Futako so F-U-T-A-K-O, and then Tama, T-A-M-A, Gawa, G-A-W-A, park run. So if you go to the Park Run Japan website, um, you can check out each of them as its own Facebook page. But Futako Tamagawa Park Run is very flat. There's a, there's a coffee shop close to there. Uh, Roger Berman and the team out there would be delighted to see you. And uh, what what a better way to set yourself up for for your six stars than actually doing a park run. So uh, um, I think the other two runs are a little further out, but that's the one that would be easiest to access from central Tokyo. It probably still is, you know, talking about 30, 45 minutes from the center, but but definitely worth it. Yeah. OK, fantastic. So there are options there. The canals are great there. If people mm. also want to stretch their legs in another way and not do too much walking or running, I can highly recommend using the e-bikes. They are available everywhere. There is an app that you can use. I spent most of my summer commuting on bikes. It, I've cycled in many places. It's very safe, very orderly, fantastic way, way to get around parts of the city on bikes. OK, we're going to address the elephant in the room. Jane Hodgson is extremely desperate, excuse the pun, to find out about the toilets. Jane, I'm very sorry, I don't have the toilet information at the moment, but when the handbook comes out on February 17th, all of that will be included and we will talk about toilets on the next call, I promise. Please hang in there. Um, let's see what else we are going to cover. Um, start area and corrals, again, we haven't got that information. That's going to come in the next session, the Tokyo Marathon team are still working through that. We will cover hydration, toilets, corrals, exactly where you go to get your medals at the finish in the next one. And I love that um, Jorg Peters is already thinking about the beer. 
So talk about that. Good places to go after a marathon for celebrations. Oh, I don't think there can be any better way to celebrate marathon than, than going to somewhere like Shinagawa or Ueno and 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 getting uh, having a couple of beers with some Japanese salary man. That's highly recommended as a way to. <laughs> um, ja Japanese microbreweries. There's an area I probably ought to spend a little bit more time researching, to be honest. Um, <laughs> and sampling. Um, um, yeah, and sampling and tasting, but that's something to, to for my next trip, I think. But generally wherever you go you're going to be met with a really warm warm welcome you know japanese hospitality is is, is amazing everybody's going to be super happy i think there's there's a little bit of sensitivity i had some sensitivity about my first trip to japan um post post what well, for us with post covid when there was still some you know pretty much everyone in japan is still wearing masks and i mean everyone so do expect to wear masks on public transport and when you're not eating because pretty much everybody else is you know i was there at, at new year and we were in asakusa um for a short while um on the 3rd of january and it was absolutely mobbed but everyone is is very is wearing masks and very mindful of you know of wearing masks but i i, I think there was such a great buzz when when i got to tokyo I was, that, that kind of fear of of being western and coming from somewhere where covid had been rife and, and maybe japan being a little bit sensitive that that completely vanished within the first sort of 10 seconds and it was the same old japan warm welcoming friendly safe great food great weather you know that big asian sky that's it was just it was amazing yeah, so no, mask is a very good point. Please, you know, we ask that everybody is respectful of the rules over there for everybody to have a good experience. You know, we all have to get along and obey what they do. So please carry masks. If you're somebody that likes to wash or change them frequently, then absolutely mm. um, bring several. Um, the other point, no eating or drinking on the trains. That is an absolute no. And taxi drivers would also not thank you for doing mm. that. It is a very clean, immaculate country. So do respect um, that as well. So no eating or drinking on the public transport. Talking of transport, we've got a question in the group about is there an equivalent to Uber in Japan, uh, Noel, or, or something that people should use? I mean, I normally just use the, the method of sticking your arm out and hailing a taxi at a a taxi rank is there a an app that people should think about getting i'm not sure i'm pretty sure we used uber when we were out there with park run um again I I don't... Uber Eats, so actually they might yeah there, that's that is a good point there probably is uh, uber i think you're right yeah okay so if everyone wants to check that um that's definitely um a good idea um we have another question leo standing is saying no any cultural slip-ups to avoid what are some of the things that would cause offense <laughs> um it's pretty it's pretty difficult to offend the japanese they're very much aware of of the way that that you know, western people behave i mean the ones you mentioned eating and drinking in public not being too loud in public areas i think is one that that sometimes you know you un unintentionally sort of can particularly in the hotels so you know you know where there are quiet areas it's a good idea to be quiet there will be announcements in all of the pub uh, the trains which might not you know, be in english asking people to switch their phones off so generally japan's pretty pretty quiet place as far as transport's concerned so that would be true if you're staying in japan you're traveling on the shinkansen that's something to to watch out for um there aren't that many to be honest i mean the slippers that are there in the bathroom facilities in the restaurants and in the hotel don't walk around the restaurant in them because that they're there for one specific place only um i i think you know it, it's really really difficult the bowing handshaking thing can be funny when you know you're not sure, sure which one to do but someone pops their hat you know offers you the hand and then give them a the handshake someone gives you a nod then then feel free feel free to bow you know the the depth of the bow represents the level of respect but you know it can turn into a bit of a contest where you know the last person to bow you know <laughs> um it can go on for a while but um it's really difficult to slip up honestly it's really difficult to slip up Talking of slipping up, just on the shoe piece there, um, Robert Wang's got a good point here. He said, going into a room in a store to try and close with shoes is a definite no. So um, maybe take that yeah. in, into consideration. Take your shoes off. I know when I lived in Asia for a long time that we didn't take our, we took our shoes off before we entered anybody's house. So they do, yeah. they do like you to take your shoes off, wear socks or the slippers. Um, yeah, the, so that's, the, you know, that's a very good point. Yeah, sorry the changing areas in in the rooms will have slippers outside that you kind of just expected to, to step into so yeah it's pretty obvious that's what i meant by it's it's pretty difficult to slip up 
Yeah, uh, I'm going to cover a couple more questions because I'm realizing we are um, time is fast approaching for us to round uh, round this off. I'm going to just uh, a couple more that came in there. Laundromats. Have you ever done laundry? Coin laundry. Yeah, yeah. Coin laundries in Japan are like an experience in themselves. So they're 24 hour coin laundries, super safe, super clean. Um, the last coin, coin laundry I was in, someone had left a box of, of oranges saying, thank you very much for using this coin laundry as a token of our gratitude for your business during the former year. Please help yourself to our oranges. So that's the level of sort of hospitality. But yeah, really easy to use, really cheap. I think you're talking about in pounds, you know, two pounds to do a to do laundry. I can't speak for central Tokyo, but I imagine it'd be very, very similar. So what's that in dollars? Um, so <laughs> Pretty much the same right now. So it's that's great. So no one has to worry about any sweaty kit or things that they want to wear earlier in the week and then wear again on race day. Um, enjoy the experience of a local laundromat. Um, Terence Tashiro asked earlier in the week, will we have Abbott Will Marathon Majors merchandise for sale at the expo? So Terence, we won't have clothes, but we will have um, a couple of items, including our Global Marathon Medal. For those of you that are doubling up and doing the Global Marathon, there are still some medals available on our store. So check those out. And by the time we have our next call, I'll have some more details to share on some merchandise. So more to come on that. Um, I will just, in closing, before we finish with some Japanese for you all to learn, I'm just going to recap and say that any additional information on COVID policies, on start corrals, on the finishing process for six star finishes. I know you're all dying to know how that will uh, how that will look. Um, toilets, of course, we can't forget Jane's question on the toilets. Hydration, anything else that is race specific, we are anxiously waiting for the runner handbook as you are on February 17th. We will then connect with our friends at the Tokyo Marathon and we will have as much information as is possible to share with you on our second session here on our Facebook group, which will be Thursday, the 23rd of February. If you're not watching this live, you'll be enjoying the recording, hopefully the one with sound, and we will record the second session too. So you can refer back to these and get all of Noel's useful tips and tricks on where to go, what to do, what not to do, and how to get the most out of your time in Tokyo. It is a fantastic, fantastic city. So in closing, we thought it'd be quite fun if everybody can start practicing some of their Japanese. Although their English is wonderful, it's always respectful to try and take a little bit of local language with you. So we're gonna work on four simple phrases in closing and then we can test everybody next time. So, hello. Konnichiwa. 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 How are you? O genki desu ka? Or the, the, w there are a couple of one word super or phrase in Japan. So genki can with a, a rate with a raising the intonation at the end. So genki is like, how are you? And it's really friendly. And you can say genki, which just means I'm great. Yeah. So genki, genki desu ka? How are you? Are you good today? How's things? You know, mm, mm, genki, I'm great. Thank you. So, so genki. genki. Genki with an inflection is how are you? Genki without an inflection is I'm great. Inflection. That was the word I was looking for, Lona. Thank, thank you for that. Yes. So, konnichiwa, Genki. Hello, how konnichiwa. are you? Genki desu. I'm great. Goodbye. Um, so, sayonara is a little bit final. So, you might say to someone at the airport, you're not going to see for a, you know, a few years. So, matane, not as in, you know, the early film showing, matane. So, matane. And usually, you know, if you sit, if you sit, the kids will be will or wave or say bye bye. So that's quite common in Japan as well. But either matane or bye bye if you're down and and hip with the kids. And thank you. Uh, arigato, arigato. Fantastic. So Noel, I will say to you arigato. I will say mm. to everybody watching arigato. We will see you next time. Please join us in a couple of weeks. We'll cover everything that we didn't get to today that we will have information for. We'll do our best to provide as much detail as possible. You can ask questions again in the live chat or ahead of time, we'll share all the details. We're extremely excited that we are going to have more than 3000 runners getting their six star medal in Tokyo. This is a huge joyous occasion for everyone. We want you to feel comfortable. We want you to be as prepared as possible and we are with you every step of the way. So thank you to everyone. It's been great to see so many people joining us. In closing, I will say arigato, matane, bye bye.
。バイバイ。ありがとうございます。